What's up, everybody? It's James back with another edition, episode two, of Who's Hating Hard on Tesla Today. On this week's show, the show gets a new microphone. The show gets a new logo. And the show gets new theme music, courtesy of moi and the Loopy app. So, I bet I know what you're wondering. Who is this week's Tesla hater? I've selected a good one for you this week. Longtime Tesla short, longtime opinion writer, who always seems to end his articles with I am slash we are short Tesla. Montana Skeptic. Now, we don't know a lot about Montana Skeptic. We don't know his name. But he is fond of telling us that he's a Yale Law graduate and a 30-year trial lawyer prior to becoming obsessed with uh, thinking how much smarter he is than Elon Musk. He thinks he's so much smarter. But in order to get to know him a little bit better, I thought we could introduce you to a few of his greatest hits. Enjoy this medley. Well, I hope you enjoyed that brief medley of some of Montana Skeptic's greatest hits. He's a Tesla short, and he likes to publish articles that say Tesla will be insolvent within four months, or it is highly doubtful that the Model 3 will ever go on sale for $35,000. It's on sale now for $35,000. Or, we forecast that the Model X will never sell 20,000 units in a year. And then they did sell 20,000 units the first year after he made that claim. So, Montana Skeptic, question for you. Do you get tired of making these dire predictions about what's gonna happen to Tesla and being proven wrong over and over and over again? If you did, you would stop writing them, but you don't. You just keep on making podcasts and articles in which you don't list your real name. And uh, it just makes me wonder, when are you going to close out of your short position? Next, we have a short audio clip from a podcast with our hero, Montana Skeptic, and a friend of his who goes by the name Quoth the Raven. These are kindred spirits, these two, because they both will not reveal their real name to the world. They would rather go by a pseudonym. So they have an hour-long podcast, and on this, they talk about the battery swap, where they showed that you can swap out one battery pack for another. It takes about 90 seconds, and you need a specialized robot, and it turns out a crew of about four technicians to make it go that fast. They only ever rolled it out to one station called Harris Ranch in California. And uh, take a listen to what Montana Skeptic has to say about it. A P.T. Barnum production, if ever there were one. <laughs> it, it, was, it was deceptive, it was misleading. You get, did not get to see what was really happening. And the battery swap takes place out of sight of the viewer, okay? Right. And I'm told it could never have happened that quickly. It's far too complicated to have accomplished it. That's why it's done out of sight. It was yeah, all you, a setup. You can't it was see. all phony. I challenge you, Elon Musk, to, to come after me. I'm telling you it was fake and phony, and you're a charlatan. And I would love you to sue me so we can have some discovery on this issue. That would make me very happy. <laughs> yeah, just don't sue me, um, please. I will personally take your deposition. Uh, I don't care. I don't have any assets. But anyways... Okay, so Montana Skeptic thinks that Elon Musk is a fraud and a phony and a charlatan and like P.T. Barnum, that he was doing a fake battery swap for the crowd. Well, funny thing about that, the Harris Ranch station is a real place. 
with real people. And even when there are no cameras around and there's no demo going on, you can find video on YouTube very quickly on the first search of battery packs being delivered to that station, being lifted by a forklift, being taken into the shop, battery packs being swapped out. Uh, and there's absolutely no way it's fake. It's definitely real. Now, some of you may be saying, but James, there's no pack swap station at my local supercharger. How come, if they work, there aren't any around? Well, there still is that one around, but they ended the test. And the reason they ended the test was there was no demand for this service. It's the kind of thing you think you need enough to figure out how to do it, and the Tesla team did figure out how to do it. And then they figured out there was no demand. And the reason for that is when you're on a long trip and you stop the car, you want to get out, you want to stretch your legs, you want to walk the dog, you want to have something to eat, you want to stop by the restrooms, you want to take a second to stop driving and relax. And as long as you're doing that anyway, it's not really saving you a lot of time to do a battery pack swap. Also, the service you had to make an appointment in advance for, and then on the way back on your return trip, you had to get your battery back, which is why you needed to make an appointment. You were just borrowing the battery that you got and then giving it back on your return trip. So this was kind of a hassle to have to do it in advance uh, when it's so easy to just pull up to the supercharger, plug your car in, walk the dog, go to the restroom, get your food, stretch your legs, relax a bit, and then your car is ready to go and it's free if you're a Model S or a Model X owner. What do you think about Montana Skeptic? You think he's right? You think he's wrong? Leave us a comment below and let us know. Links are in the show description. And that's it for today's episode, episode two of Who's Hating Hard on Tesla Today. If you like this episode, click on the like button. If you want to know when I make more videos, click on the subscribe button. And if you want to send me an email, I have who's hating hard at yahoo.com, or you can follow me on Twitter at I cannot underscore enough. Talk to you next week.